I has I has goose. <laughs> you got the Funko Pop. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> now I want I want the one they had they made like a limited edition one with all the tentacles coming out of his mouth. Spoilers. Spoilers, Tara. <laughs> really? Uh, all right. Well, we went to see a movie a second time, and there was like a twelve-year-old girl sitting next to me, and she had the best time at this movie. But her commentary was cracking me up because, like, all of a sudden, she's like, "Something's not right about that cat." <laughs> and like all, the, and like where I think if I hadn't seen the movie yet, I would have found it a little annoying. But because we'd already seen it, I was like, "This is great." <laughs> like, and she was just having the best time, and I'm like, that must be cool. Like, when I was a 12-year-old girl, I couldn't see a chick kick everybody's ass. So, and she had a great time, and that was exciting. It's like, I just think the kid there, like, oh, just uh, narrating this shit out loud. I yeah, like something's not right about that cat, and I was like... <laughs> like, I was trying not to react too much to her, because I didn't want to make her feel weird, because she was, like, talking to her dad. <laughs> But there were a couple things she said that I was just like, okay, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try to get this running. If, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not having any problem because I I record this. But if you're if you're not, if you're but if live, you're watching it live, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having fun. We're having fun with ISPs. But we'll try to make this work anyway because. Monkey buckets. All right, here we go. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. A little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, um, so you remember uh, a couple weeks ago, and I didn't put the, I don't have the, why didn't I put the, the intro? I, I didn't put the intro shot up. That's been that kind of a night. Um. Oh well. We just had the. We just had the. The whatever. Whatever. I don't care. I don't you care. Goes. Um. Remember a couple Stupid people, Catherine things. Yeah. You remember a couple of weeks ago? Uh, we had the the, the mayor of Newport Richie, uh, or Port Richie. I should I should say there is two. There are two port. There's Port Richie and Newport Richie. Mayor of Port Ritchie was arrested in Florida. The SWAT team went in, all that shit. Yes. Um, not going to spend a lot of time on this one. I just, I have to mention this because, seriously, really? Um, a second Port Ritchie mayor is under arrest. How many mayors do they have? They had, well, no, they had one, and this guy... Oh, acting mayor Terrence Rowe, sixty-four. He was brought in to be the new mayor. This is after the previous mayor. A SWAT Pre team went in, and he pulled a shotgun on them. He was firing and shit, and yeah. he was practicing medicine without a license and yeah, all sorts that's of right. for like twenty years. Yeah, all sorts of crazy crap. And come on, fucking thing. All right. Just try. I'm trying to, to rearrange all my windows. Anyway, yeah, the, the the mayor was all sorts of crazy crap, and they sent the cops at him, and he ain't mayor no more. So this guy, the vice mayor, Terrence Rowe, who was the acting mayor, he's been arrested in connection with shit the the mayor did, the previous mayor did. Good, good. <laughs> so they're just they're just going through all the mayors. They're picking them off. Is there anyone here who hasn't been involved in illegal activity? Raise your hand. You're the mayor now. <laughs> Sir, that's my dog. <laughs> the, dog is the mayor now. <laughs> okay. Oh, Florida. Anyway, let's get into our main stories this week. Hey, let's go to Michigan, and we got video. Oh, God, this one is... This one not only is what what is wrong with you. This is bless your heart because bless your heart. Let's let's have a look. Um, here's the video. Let's bring this up. 
So many things going on tonight. Um, this is from a Burger King. Here she comes in. There she is. And, um... She threw the cookie display, tried to jump the counter several times, and could not manage to jump the counter. Oh, honey. Then she threw the wet, wet floor sign, and she came back for more, <laughs> and then they finally left. Oh, what the fuck this happened? This was because of her order from the day before? Yes. 34-year-old woman threw a cookie display at a Burger King employee, tried to jump, jump the counter, tossed food at a worker, and whipped a wet floor sign across the restaurant when she tried to get a refund for a burger that had tomatoes on it. Yeah, fuck those tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, I don't like tomatoes either. Police said Portia Tyler went to the Burger King on January 27th because a burger she ordered with no tomatoes the night before had tomatoes. Employees were not injured. <clears throat> and, like, they offered her a new meal. Yeah, they didn't. They, they It's like, this is what we can do. This is what we're allowed to do. But, no, I want to wreck your store over tomatoes. No, I would say... I don't like tomatoes. If I get shit with tomatoes, I just take them off. But as soon as I say that, 67 people in the chat are going to be, but four allergies! Fine. But if still. You if you can't even have the seed or the juice of the tomato, okay, I understand how that can be frustrating. But you don't wreck the Burger King. And not only that, if she ordered it the I mean, night it's already a Burger King. How much worse can their lives get? <laughs> It's it's our, she ordered it the night before. That means anyone on staff now was not in any way responsible, because it's a new shift. Yeah, you come Half in. Those people probably weren't even there, and I've had that happen. I've had people come in and want to yell at me about shit that happened two days ago when I wasn't there, and I say, "Well, gosh, I'm sorry, but I wasn't here." And then they just keep yelling, and I'm like, it's like I, I didn't. I didn't do anything to you. It's also like they don't understand what a manager is. You know, the idea of there are tiers of people responsible for shit in a store. And the people behind the counter are very rarely the people who are responsible for shit in the stores. Yeah. Uh, yes, I know, Tara. I can see you there trying to hit the button. What button? Uh-huh. Sure. <clears throat> what? I was reading. Oh, you were reading this story. Okay, I thought you were No, so, well, someone said Tara hates tomatoes and cucumbers. Listen, we don't have enough time for all the foods that Tara won't eat. No, we don't. <laughs> Tara's a very picky eater. <laughs> That's and, an understatement. Uh, Tara didn't really like vegetables. He tries really hard. God bless him. He like <laughs> sneaks chickpeas into meatloaf and stuff. And, you know, he gets excited if I eat a piece of broccoli. Like, we don't even have time for all the shit I won't eat. Really? Not bro Not even broccoli? I like, even I like broccoli. I like, I like broccoli, but I don't like, like broccoli. And I don't like big pieces because I also have weird things about textures. Like, I don't like any kind of beans because I don't like the texture because there's skin and then mushy stuff and it's gross. So, like, broccoli, I like very small pieces because I don't like feeling all the ruffly stuff at the top. Like, I'm a bitch to feed is what I'm saying. <laughs> but I try really hard. Like, he has friends that are big foodies and, like... As long as there's something relatively plain on the menu, like, I'll fucking go along. Like, I, I don't want to be that person that makes everybody's night hard because of all the 16 things I won't eat. I'm just like, no, nah, I'll just have a side of fries. We're good. But you are, you're also not throwing the cookie stand at the Burger no, King. No, I'm not going to throw shit. Right. Because they give me tomatoes. I'm going to peel the fucking tomatoes off. Simba's in here taking a giant shit right now, so it's going to get really wow. smelly. Wow. <laughs> I hear him digging, so 
if I start making this face, it's because Simba takes giant smelly crap. <laughs> what? Okay, I thank you. It's good You're to welcome. know. <laughs> We just want you guys to get the feeling of... I want you to have the full experience. Like, this is a scratch and sniff episode. (laughs) So, uh, last week, a blessed thing happened. Instagram and Facebook went down. Yeah! It was awesome! Because I was at the cat shelter all day. So I got home and I was like, what? It was awesome! There was no Facebook, no Instagram... So guess what happened? Twitter? No. Every fucking time. People were calling the police because Instagram and Facebook were down. Come on. Emergency services in the USA and Australia have had to request that internet users stop phoning 911 to report that Facebook and Instagram were down. You know how Nash was just scolding all of you for telling him the stream is down? This is that cranked up to 11. Like, at least you're not calling the police being like, excuse me, Nash, your stream is down? Who fix it? Facebook, which owns Instagram, had possibly its most widespread outage on March 13th and 14th, with users unable to access or load either website all around the world. Uh, Facebook acknowledged the issue, assured users everything's fine. Australian news show Sunrise reported that Queensland's police are saying, please don't call 000, that's their 911. I know. Yeah, Canterbury Police in New Zealand have had to make the plea on Twitter. Residents to stop reporting Facebook outages. Um, Police in in Bothell, Washington. What? In what reality is that an emergency? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. 911 is for emergencies. I can't post a picture of my cat. It's not an emergency. And like, man, I get that. I post a lot of pictures of my cats. Yeah, I you post do. a lot of pictures of shelter cats. Like, I love posting pictures of cats. But if I have to wait two hours to do it, nobody's going to die. And that's literally the definition of emergency. I mean, how is it that you... It's not customer service. No! They got shit to do. They got houses on fire and people being stabbed, man. They're busy. I I understand what it's like because I was just talking about ISP customer service is freaking useless. They don't even have a phone number for Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, Because they don't care. You know, this is part of why they don't have a number for Instagram and Facebook. Because anytime anything happened... It would be flooded. Can you imagine being customer service for Facebook? Oh. <sighs> yeah, I've got all these I've got all these angry faces on my posts and I'd like to take those off, please. Excuse me, I would like to talk to you about the fake news. <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> but you can't 911. What are, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Are they going to go over and shoot Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> They're okay. gonna, the SWAT team's gonna go to fucking Facebook. Right, like, are they gonna send an emergency paramedic crew to defibrillate the servers at Facebook? Turn Facebook back on! Turn Facebook back on! Right now, turn it back on! Turn it back on! The it's fuck not is- like Facebook was just like, let's see what happens. Let's <laughs> just shut it all off. <laughs> Cost ourselves millions of dollars. Ah! No. Like, I know Mark Zuckerberg looks like some kind of evil robot, but he's not the kind of evil robot that's going to take money out of his own pocket. <laughs> evil robot parts are expensive. I just don't understand. What is what is 911 supposed to do? Are they... They're, 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 oh, I'm sorry. We bumped the shut off Facebook button. We'll turn that sorry. right back on for you. Are bad. That was Jimmy. He's new. There We're nine one one. We control everything in the world. No. Uh we got well. We have. We've had a lot of home intruder stories here, where people show up and do all sorts of horrible things in other people's houses for no good and reason. And sometimes nice things. 
They, yeah, they'll do nice things. Yeah, remember the one in, in Canada? That was amazing. They, they broke showed... in and cleaned the house? Yeah, they broke in and cleaned. That was awesome. But um, this one is, well, it's, it's, it's definitely a different sort of home intrusion. From Colorado, home intruder, actually adult moose. Oh. Beckenridge police responded to a suspected home invasion on Friday, only to discover the creature they were trying to get rid of from the house was not a human. It was a moose, a full grown adult cow moose. To further complicate things, the moose was found in the basement of the home. Keep in mind that an adult cow moose can weigh close to 800 pounds. This is in Colorado? Yeah. They have moose in Colorado? Yes. Oh. They have mountains. Okay. <laughs> and they can just break into your house? Uh, yeah, apparently. Somehow it got in. And it just set himself like <clears throat> he said he made himself comfy. All right, we got I got to show you this. Is that poop everywhere? I don't know if that's that's poop or some sort of that may be poop. That may be he just came in. <laughs> he found like like a mattress. He made himself comfy. Did you see the viral Twitter thread this week of a guy in an apartment building whose neighbors, two dogs and cat, like broke out of their apartment and into his? Yes, I saw that. And the neighbors weren't home. So like all day, he's like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> the, and they were just the friendliest critters. There's like, yeah. hi. Like, hi. You're hi our now. new friend now. Our human left and we're bored. <laughs> Cat's like sleeping in his bed. This is so different. Cuter than the moose. The moose, I think, would be more daunting. Yeah, because moose. Yeah, they're not. They're not the, known as the most even-tempered of creatures. You know, that is that's a eight hundred pounds is a lot of moose. That's a big boy. They uh, they don't know how it got in. I guess, uh, I guess a big girl. Yeah. There's no antlers. Yeah. If you live in an area where wildlife sightings are common, make sure you keep windows and doors properly sealed and put all food away. Utilize bear-proof garbage containers. No one was hurt in this scenario, but a wild animal can likely feel trapped. Even don't lock the door. Are we saying moose can work doorknobs? Well, if you know what? If you have the this is why you should never get these for the outside of your house. Those handle doorknobs. Yeah. Have you seen those? Yeah. They're, they're like, you put, it's like you just push down on it and the door opens. All the moose has got to do is go... Flump, 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 flump. Cats and can do it. Cats can do that too, cats yes. Cats can open those. Those are bad doorknobs. Don't get those doorknobs. Get the circle doorknobs that require the thumbs. They're, well, they're better for elderly people because <clears throat> so round doorknobs are harder to grip and turn if you have arthritis. Okay. But otherwise... Okay, yes, but they're also great for moose. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, because you'll wake up and the oh hello, hello moose. Um, Hi. can I help you? Hey, you got any Cheetos? And I have to love the thing about the moose is going to be like, "What are you doing here?" And not like, "What am I doing here?" The moose's response is always, "What the hell are you doing here?" It's a nice house. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah, it's like I live here. I'm sorry. What are you doing my, here? My friend Squirrel is going to be here in a few hours. Yeah. We're setting up shop. Yeah, you, 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 you weren't invited. Fuck off. And there's not really much you can you can respond to besides, okay. Cause... Okay. Kind of like the people at the mountain lion in the living room. Yeah. It's... That house belongs to a mountain lion now. <laughs> it's his house Maybe now. she'll let you stay. Maybe. Oh. No, I... I kind of, you know what? I can't be mad at this lady. At the, in the next story, I can't be mad because it's it, this was right there, this was right fucking there. So yeah, um, okay. Uh, t-shirt cannon, t-shirt gun used to blast drugs into prison. Oh no. <laughs> An Oklahoma woman armed with a $1,600 t-shirt gun successfully launched a package of contraband over the fence of a prison. 
but her smuggling attempt was quickly derailed by eagle-eyed correction officers. Police alleged that Carrie Jo Hickman, 40, uh, drove Sunday morning to the North Folk, uh, North Fork Correctional Center and used a Bleacher Reacher Pro. A Bleacher Reacher Pro. That's a great name. T-shirt gun to blast a package over the fence. Prison uh, personnel spotted the incoming round, uh, which landed near a housing unit, and uh, intercepted it before the intended recipient could scoop its co- up its contents. Uh, the seized package contained methamphetamine, pot, cell phones, tobacco, earbuds, charger, and digital scales. Upon seeing the contain, that before now. What? I'm kind of amazed nobody thought of that before now. That's what I'm saying. It was right there. Right. How is this not happening all the time? And this this is one of those things that I'm sitting there like, we got to build a wall. Uh Uh-huh. You're going to build a wall, huh? $1,600 t-shirt cannon. What the fuck you could do? We got to stop drugs coming over the wall. Uh Uh-huh. What you you going to do about it with with the wall? Uh... There you go. Get a wall. Good luck with that. Good luck with the wall. Bleacher Reacher I Pro. I think it's not me that's going to get the comments. It's you. <laughs> Fuck them. The Bleacher <laughs> Reacher. The fucking Bleacher. That sounds kind of specific porny. It does. It sounds kind of suggestive. Yeah. In a not fine way. Because, you know, porn stars have to bleach their anuses. That's a thing. They have to. Yeah, you didn't know that? Because it has to be a pretty color. I, it's... So, the bleacher reacher. <laughs> I didn't need to know that. You didn't know that? I did not. Yeah, if you do any kind of anal in porn, you have to bleach your anus so it's a nice, pretty color. It's a thing. For the stars. <laughs> it's a thing. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have no idea how much work goes into porn, okay? No, I don't. I don't want to. It's not like people just show up in a room and fuck. Do you, is there any other context where you just happily drop these facts on people? Oh, yeah. I accidentally it's taught... It's really fun at, at family parties. I accidentally uh, taught all his coworkers what furries are at a work party. That was the most inappropriate boss ever. Yeah, for the rest of the party, I was introduced as, this is, Paul, this is uh, Dan's wife, she's a furry. Rest of the party? <clears throat> rest of the time he was there. And I was like, I'm not a furry. That's okay if you are. I'm not, personally. <laughs> ah. I treat the penis to my horrified family. That was awesome. How do I know this stuff? I don't know. <sighs> I just do. It's like you, 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 it's you're you exposed to these facts. Over a lifetime, you're exposed to certain information. And all of us we're like, okay, this is important, this is important, this is... And you, what you go, this is important, is anal bleaching. That's, that's what... Okay. Yeah. That's vital info. Blocking that away. I don't details, man. Uh, let's move on to Florida again. What do you think? Um, so, we've seen stories... Where, so, where people smash into things in their cars. We've seen people where pe- stories where people drive into bodies of water. Oh, I lost you. Wait. What? I'm still here. I lost you for a second there. I know. I know. Okay. We see Call stories. <clears throat> we see stories where people have driven into objects in their cars. We've seen people where stories where people have driven into bodies of water in their cars. Here's a story about someone who combined them. It's it's sort of like a, a do-it-yourself lake. Florida woman hits hydrant, causes eight-foot-deep washout. Wow. 
Car ends up at the bottom of massive hole. Woman arrested on DUI charge. 22-year-old Florida woman is facing a DUI charge after she hit a fire hydrant and the spewing water created an eight, a washout eight feet deep with her car at the bottom of the hole. According to Florida Highway Patrol, uh, Alexandria, Alexandria Runyon was driving a 2004 Buick Century when she hit a fire hydrant. That's a big old fucking car. That'll take out a hydrant. Troopers say the fire hydrant started spewing water onto the road in the shoulder, eventually eventually created a hole 20 feet wide and 8 feet deep. And just ate the car? The car was trapped at the bottom of the hole, according to the report. Uh, Trooper said Runyon was not injured, but she was suspected of being impaired and arrested. Did she a get out of the car, I hope? Well, they arrested her, so yes. No, but like, did they have to fish her out? Maybe. That is, that is impressive. You you, yeah. you you crash into something on land and end up with your car at the bottom of a lake. That's that that is amazing. You gotta be sitting there like, how the fuck drunk am I? <laughs> Shit. Oh, no more tequila. No yeah. more fucking tequila. Never God, again. That is that is amazing. How do you how did that That is that is a feat. That is a feat. Well, the hydrant of, created the hole? Yes. I feel like there were some existing infrastructure problems there. That is that is a confusing hangover to say the yeah. least. Wait, wait, wait. My car is at the bottom of a lake. Yes. Like when you sober up and they explain it to you, <laughs> do you believe them or do you think they're fucking with you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have one more tonight. And this one is... God damn it. Why don't... Oh, you people. Stop this shit. And all I can say is at least it wasn't his dick. Okay, that's a good opening. Please say a man shot himself in the foot after throwing shoe at cockroach. What? Was his shoe a gun? Please say a man shot himself in the foot Tuesday morning after he threw a shoe at a cockroach. 50-year-old man apparently saw the bug across the room, took off his shoe to throw it at the nuisance. His revolver, however, was still inside the shoe. And discharged after hitting the ground, the what? fired bullet came back and struck the it struck the man in his foot. Who keeps a gun in their shoe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that seems really fucking impractical. No, no, you need to read the next paragraph. The man who uses a wheelchair was inside his home at the time of the accident. There, there's a lot going what on. What the fuck happened here? <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna throw your shoe, the first you thing... the shoe, honestly. <laughs> the first thing you need to do is take your gun out of your shoe. Gabe in the channel says, you're not Bayonetta, dude. I know. Don't keep your gun in your shoe. <laughs> you're gonna get blisters. I mean, you're even you're in a wheelchair. Okay, you can rip, you can mount a fucking holster. It's yeah. a chair. Yeah. It's boom. It's I, in your lap. Not in your shoe. Why in your shoe? <laughs> of all the fucking places, it's not exactly a quick draw location. And then to throw to just to like hurl the shit. He had two shoes. He had two shoes. Yeah, maybe choose the other shoe. And he picked the one with the gun in it to throw. So he had a fifth last week for the guy that gave himself a Prince Albert with a bullet. Oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. He shot right through his dick. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We we've been having a lot of this just oh, it's not a toy. 
No! It's, you've got to be careful with the damn thing. Again, the safety is a thing. Use <clears throat> the safety. At least, you know what? All I can say here is at least he didn't shoot at the cockroach, because that could have been worse. He kind of did. <laughs> he kind of did. Also, throwing a shoe at a cockroach is not going to work. Those things are faster than Usain fucking Bolt. And, it's not gonna work. And more Those things travel at the speed of sound, man. And more resilient. You've ever had to stomp on a cockroach? Yeah. You have to, like, slam down. A, a, a shoe bouncing off them isn't going to do shit. Fuck, they probably fired that gun. <laughs> cockroach probably shot him. <laughs> goddamn indestructible. Oh. <sighs> You don't tell me! Just... I, the first thing we learned this week is if, if you have a gun, be careful with that shit. Like, it's, a, it's an object that is designed solely to kill things. So you should consider that in its storage and use. Not in your shoe! I don't think that's hard. We've learned not this. Your shoe, not pointing at your dick with the safety off. Like we've learned, uh, don't drink and drive, or you could accidentally end up at the create a lake and end up at the bottom of it. You could change your local topography. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that lake named after you? <laughs> that is a lot of story. A lot of story. I was I was young. Oh, hi, Daddy. You see, Daddy. I see, Daddy. Hey, Doodlebug. Oh, bye, Doodlebug. I just realized what's happening in here. We've learned um, a, uh, a, f a 15 foot wall can be defeated by a t shirt cannon. Oops. Oh, uh, that's. I think that might be an issue soon. I don't know. Yeah. We've learned that if a moose breaks into your house, it's the moose's house. Yeah, it's the moose's house now. It's the, they still pay the mortgage. You, you, it's it belongs to the moose. That is the law. That is moose law. That, uh, you, we've learned that nine one one has no control over every nine one one. Very specific person purpose. Maybe that's why Boris and Natasha hated Bullwinkle so much. Maybe he took their house. Nine one one. Is a matter of are you on fire? Is are you your on fire? Are you bleeding profusely? Is someone you know on fire? Is your house on fire? Are your pets on fire? Is there fire or blood or there holes in you? Are there holes in you? Has someone just stopped being alive in your vicinity? Just like whoop, boom. 911 is for Targaryen <clears throat> situations. Fire and blood. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> if you don't have a Targaryen situation, not for 911. Yeah, or it, that does not include incest. 911's not for the incest, though. No. Yeah. Fire, no. blood, not incest. Fire and blood, but um We've learned that you if someone puts pickle uh, puts tomatoes on your burger and offers you a free meal as recompense. Just take that shit. Take it. You're doing great. It's not a matter of, you know... Let's be honest. You had dinner at Burger King. You weren't doing great to start with. No. Finally this week, it's it's like... They can't find anyone not, in, not indictable to be the mayor of Port Ritchie. Maybe the moose. Send that moose down there. <laughs> It'd be an improvement. It'd definitely be an improvement. I mean, the moose has a breaking and entering charge. 